go through the landscape of what is going to be available or what you've tried and what's going to be available. And actually what I'm more most interested in is what um, ecosystem, what app stores are they going to have access to? Like what is the Oculus Santa Cruz going to be in terms of content? Like, is it a go plus or is a, is it a rift minus or rift equivalent? Well, so that's that's why it's so fun to to start off with that basis of balance and bre- breaking down uh tracking rendering and display right those are going to be the three things that you're going to find different between the different headsets um <clears throat> and obviously stores are going to be different too at the end of the day because that's the platforms trying to make money off of this whole ecosystem but uh so you've got Google's tracking Microsoft's tracking and then Oculus's tracking system and you've also got the chip company, Qualcomm, providing its own uh, technology that more or less seems to be across the board uh, used in the mobile systems. Um, I found it interesting that you go back to last year and Intel closed up a lot of their VR headset uh, efforts because Microsoft's tracking tech was so good. It just locked out mm. um, anyone from needing Intel's tracking technology. Uh, at least for VR headsets. Um, so right now, if you look at the standalones, the difference is uh, in whether they're in a developer state or even pre-developer state, or whether they're consumer-ready. The consumer-ready things that you're seeing have three DOF controllers, um, more or less. You've got, uh, I haven't tried the Pico, but it sounds like the controllers, from what I've heard, the controllers aren't there yet. Uh, Santa Cruz with the controllers that I tried last year at OC4. I don't remember it bugging out. Uh, it might have it might have tracked once or twice, like maybe jumped a little bit. Um, if I if I recall correctly, I think I tried the test where you look away and then look back and to see if your hand drifts. Um, I think if I did that to an extreme, uh, I would see the drift happen a little bit, but it would snap back into place uh, very quickly. The most impressive thing about the Santa Cruz tracking was when I reached behind myself to here and grabbed something and brought it forward. So I'm looking straight Mm. ahead and I grabbed something here and I pulled it forward. And And it was maybe you're being like like your wallet or something or like a gun behind you. It was something attached to the wall. It was like an object I needed to to grab off the wall and throw at the enemy. And the cameras could see it. That was the impressive thing. So I was I was Mm. here. And it could see to about right here with me looking forward. You're right and now moving is, actually something. Uh, yeah, I'm moving something. But yeah, it was, I don't know, 45 degrees behind me and maybe two feet. And it was yeah. still able to pick up that hand movement. Um, but you sure it didn't and, use IMUs? Well, I, I think it used some combo of internal mm. uh, tracking with maybe picking it up uh, from here. Uh, maybe it maybe it did some trickery and knew that there was an object back here and assumed because I did the grip motion that I grabbed it. Um, prob- the, the bottom line is it worked and it felt uh, like that extra bit that I need to really feel like my hands are really here. Um, mm-hmm. There's so many emotions like pulling a bow and arrow back that I don't know if any sensors that are ready today in 2018 are going to pick up. But that's a motion I'm going to want to do quite a bit. Uh, I think they can solve that, and I think bottom line is, I, as of all the things I've seen, I think Facebook is furthest along uh, mm. with both inside-out tracking and really, really immersive hand controllers in a very comfortable headset that, that renders at a good frame rate. I tried to get that info out of uh, Carmack uh, back at OC4, like what display are you using, and he said we're not using a Rift display. That's all he would say. Mm. Um, but it looked did you great. Notice it? Th- did you notice it looking better than a rift? It's so hard that the, the different elements that play there between frame rate and uh, lenses uh, changing the distortion um, or the mm. like, the god rays and stuff. I did notice god rays. I noticed less of a screen door effect than I'm seeing right now in big screen. Um, but I, I hate saying that it's the end all be all of displays. The the Pro is uh, the Vive Pro has an amazing display and that looks great. Um, but it just overall I felt like the all in one package that Facebook was working on was the best I'd, I'd seen yet. The only hmm. caveat to that is uh, we haven't seen what's behind closed doors at Microsoft. 
We haven't seen what's behind closed doors at Google and uh, Apple. So Google. Yeah. So I guess let's paint the landscape a little bit again. Um, <clears throat> you, you mentioned Oculus. They have their all-in-one. Santa Cruz is what they're calling it for now. Um, Google, with their Daydream platform, I think have announced the Lenovo all-in-one headset. Mirage, and yeah. then Vive on on the other end has the Vive Focus, which for now is is only launched in China. Um, have you have you tr- had a chance to try that yet? Yeah, I've tried. I, I have kind of have the same feeling about all of the headsets, including Vive Focus, that have a three DOF controller. Um, mm. They may be good for watching movies on airplanes mm-hmm. or trains, but I don't. I have a hard time seeing a massive user base beyond that. Um, the three DOF controller <laughs> is absolutely maddening when you want to reach forward and grab something and you have to lean forward and grab mm. it because it's only going to keep a consistent distance yeah. for your hand from the headset. So you've, you've right. physically got to retrain your body to lean forward in order to grab things that have depth. They're all trying, uh, different devs are trying various simulation systems, like you can slide your finger on the pad to simulate a little uh, bit of depth. But it's not but natural, it doesn't, it doesn't feel, feel right. right. Yeah. No, and I think once you actually, you know, spend decent time in a Vive or an Oculus, you just don't want to go back. Mm-hmm. It just feels yeah. strange, it just feels like using a way too old computer, or why is the laptop so clumsy and doesn't respond fast? I actually used to something else, you, you just don't want to accept it. Like you described with eye tracking, the moment they turn it off, you felt like I want it back. Why is it shitty right now? Yep. Yeah, that seems like a funny regression that we're like kind of back and forth <laughs> with, with with certain advancements and back <laughs> again with like you know and Oculus Go isn't even out yet, and that's like almost a, it's almost a step backward in terms of like oh that's not even sixed off that's freaking going back to gear. That's a great point, and that's a lot of the commentary that you hear among people that really watch this industry closely. Is they, 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 I got complaints saying you didn't include the chipset in your comparison talking about all the different standalones mm. and the Oculus Go has an older chipset and you should have mentioned that and mm. like mm. I, I get that from like there's a certain subset of people that want the latest absolute latest chips in their systems but what matters is the end experience and if mm. Oculus yeah, Go runs so. at the solid frame rate the whole time yeah. And it's a better experience than a Gear VR with all the Gear VR games that you've yeah, already sure. they've already built. Like that's that's a compelling two hundred dollar uh, yes. package. And it's sure. uh, I, th- I think what a lot of people miss is the uh, fact that it's not just about um, you know the specs of the device, which I usually also find very interesting, but also the abstraction. Like when you run the Gear VR, you have basically an Android system that runs in the background, and on top of that, you run the Gear VR software. Now when you take away the whole Android system, you obviously have more performance for just the Gear VR apps. So you kind of have more performance even when you would potentially have a weaker chip. So it's like with cameras those days. You know, software determines the quality of a picture way more than just the sensor in a smartphone. And it's also the optimization. Why is Apple's iPhone running slightly longer on a battery than an average Android? Well, they basically optimized the hell out of the um, PCB and also on the system of a chip. So it's not just the gigahertz, which actually don't mean anything. It's also the way of they do the optimization. Even when you have the chipset, even when you license an ARM, like what is ARM? You just get basically the description of the processor, but you can change it yourself. You can print it yourself in mm. different factories. So it's very hard for, with, without user testing or actually trying it out yourself to say what is better, what is not just on the specs. Because a lot of Chinese companies do great VR headsets on paper. But when you try them out, well, some are good, some are less good, even though the specs look very, you know, fantastic. So, yep. You, you nailed um, so much of it. Um, one thing I wanted to say uh, what about the switch to standalone is just, in, just recently we had the Rift go offline for a full day because of the security certificate thing. We also have just, you just talked about it with uh, Gear VR and having to deal with all of those existing operating system thing. Another, uh, another example of that problem is the way that Gear VR uses Chromecast. It's it's not good. It it's it's <laughs> um buggy. In many apps audio doesn't come across. Um yep. and I can't I don't know if they've updated in the last three or four months. Maybe they have, maybe it's better. But on Daydream it's beautiful. On cr- the Chromecast mm-hmm. integration is is amazing. It I don't notice any any 
streaming lag up on the up on the TV. It's full screen. It's that the viewpoint is really well rendered for what the person in VR is seeing, and I'm able to have fun with my family uh, because yeah. that is is the way it works. But that's Google controlling its entire operating system, its whole ecosystem. And you see uh, Facebook again and again and again coming up against these limits of operating in someone else's yeah. sandbox. And that's the biggest switchover that happens when Facebook controls the whole ecosystem. Suddenly, like, mm-hmm. does Facebook want to sell its own version of Chromecast? Because that makes mm-hmm. VR way, 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 way better. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's all I these things imagine that them. happen. I can't imagine them trying to sell no. a you know a dongle just for I mean, they can, a headset, right? Unless they unless it it comes included or something. Exactly. But like, they're not going to try and compete against both Apple TV no. and Chromecast no. and Amazon Fire Stick or whatever. No. Like, <laughs> plus, no, no, what are they going to? What other content would they want to sell on that? Like Facebook's Watch Tab? Well, you know, okay. I mean, <laughs> they, well, they just paid I mean, yesterday for MLB games. They're they're going to be exactly. exclusively mm. broadcasting exactly. some MLB MLB games. I mean, it, it's. And they also I guess what I'm saying is they're, they're not going to do it overnight. They're not going to do it overnight, but it will. It's, it's it's their direction, right? It's it's the direction the whole company is going. Once you have one successful product, then you can have all these ancil, you know, these secondary products that enhance this product also stand on their own. Mm. And I'll fo- when they went out and tried to do a phone, there was only so much they could do operating the way they were. Right. Here, you've got once you have one solid product, you can build all these other things that help it. it may take years. Yeah, that's so. fascinating. Um. All right, I think let's let's put this uh, one to bed. 